Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about periodic functions, stretching, and translating graphs. Okay, so our objective is to learn how changes in the values of a function uh, affect the characterization of the graph of the function. And we can think of a function y is equal to a times uh, x minus h uh, plus k, where y is the function f of x. All right, so we're going to think about how the graph changes based on uh, quantities of changes <clears throat> uh, within this function. And I'm also going to uh, provide this value, uh, plus k. All right, uh, so let's get started. Now let's uh, talk about some of the vocabulary and some of the things you need to know about periodic functions. So a periodic function is some function that repeats itself uh, repetitively uh, over a given period. So there's a given cycle for the function, and that cycle occurs uh, every x unit amount uh, of value. So the period is a cycle um, of a function that's gra graphically repetitive, uh, and typically the period is represented by a positive number. So here we have a periodic function up and then down over a length of two units, up and then down over a length of two units. And so you can see uh, it repeats itself, and it is periodic because that period of repetition is two units. And you can measure the period. Uh, a lot of times I do it from peak to peak. Sometimes you can do it from trough to trough. To trough. But basically from start to end of the function, that's going to be considered the length from x to y is uh, the period. And the cycle is uh, one cycle of a function is from uh, peak to peak or one period of the function. All right, so uh, let's talk about the fundamental period. Fundamental period is the smallest period of the function. Now, there might be uh, multiple periods, right? Uh, and you can en encompass those multiple periods. Let's say there, each day is a period and then the year is a period. A fundamental period of a year would be, let's just say, the day, although the year also repeats itself. So as we're talking specifically about the days, <clears throat> Uh, we say the fundamental period is the smallest period of that given function. Uh, all right, so periodic equations. If the period is p, then we can say that f of x plus p in parentheses is equal to f of x. So what does that mean? Well, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 here. Uh, and this is negative 1. We see that at negative 6, the value of uh, y is 0. At negative 5, the value is at one, uh, negative five is at three. So negative five, three is the first peak. If I were to find the next peak, it would be at negative three, five. All right, so let's say a uh, function of negative five plus two, which is the period, is equal to f of negative three. So negative three here, uh, we see that the value for y is three. At negative uh, five, it's three. And if we subtract 2 again, which is the period, uh, we end up at negative 1. The uh, value at negative 1 is 3. The value, again, if we add 2 more, is going to be uh, 3 again. So at 1, uh, the height is 3. So we see that if we add the period to any uh, value of x, we're going to end up at the same point, relatively speaking, in uh, that cycle or that uh, function. So. Um, here again, if I add 2 to this point, or the period to this point, I'll end up here, add 2, and here, add 2, and here. If I start here and add 2, then uh, 2, I add 2, I'm here, uh, graph is here, graph is here. So what we're doing is we're saying that f of x plus p is really shifting the graph to map that function onto uh, f of x. Okay, so the period uh, within parentheses just maps the function uh, to the left or right horizontally uh, so that it places it uh, right on top of the function uh, and you wouldn't know the difference other than you've shifted the function on to the function. Alright, so let's talk about amplitude. Am amplitude is the deviation from the midline of a cyclic function uh, not to be confused with the overall height of the function meaning from uh, maximum value to minimum value. So the amplitude deviation from the midline 
and we can figure out the amplitude by taking the maximum value, capital N, minus the minimum value, lowercase m, and then finding the average of those two values, uh, I'm sorry, subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value and then dividing by two. Uh, it's not the average of the two values. So I have a maximum of 100, minimum of 50, 100 minus 50 uh, over two is 25. 25 is gonna end up being my amplitude. Amplitude is denoted as a positive number, just like the period is. Um, although I can have a negative sign in front of the amplitude when I write my periodic function, equation. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. All right, so uh, what is the midline? So the midline is the midline between the uh, peak and the trough of the periodic function. And so we can get the periodic function this time by taking the average of the maximum and minimum height and then creating a line based on that value. So remember midline is a line. It needs an equation. And we can find the midline by setting y equal to m plus n over 2. So m in this case, uppercase m, is 4. Uh, that's the peak y value. And then uh, lowercase m, the uh, minimum y value is going to be negative 6. All right, so let's put that right here. And so we're going to add 4 plus negative 6 ends up being negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. My midline ends up being y is equal to negative 1. All right, so we said that uh, the midline... Oops. Uh, the midline is uh, that halfway point between the peak and the trough, and we can find our amplitude because the amplitude is a deviation from the midline. So now there are two ways you can find the amplitude. I have maximum minus minimum divided by 2, and then also I can take the difference between the uh, maximum or minimum value and the midline. So the amplitude can also be equal to uh, the absolute value of the distance between uh, the peak minus uh, the midline, uh, which is equal to 5. All right, uh, so let's move on. So we have amplitude, we have period. All right, so now we're going to do some classwork. I want you to take care of handling this classwork. I'm going to pause here while you figure this out, and we're going to go through the answers. So find the fundamental period and amp amplitude. Uh, we're going to find f of 45 and f of 75, and then we're going to graph in pairs c and d, and let's come back to that in a moment. Okay, so the fundamental period is going to be 4. Um, I can measure from, uh, uh, I guess, this point on the x-axis, this point on the x-axis, or uh, from peak to peak or from trough to trough. Uh, so uh, the period is going to be 4 x units. So these are in x units. And then I'm going to find my amplitude. My amplitude is going to be the peak uh, at 2 for y, minus and minus 1, uh, negative 1 for y here, divided by 2 is equal to 1.5. So my amplitude is equal to 1.5. All right, if I want to find uh, f of 45, you're going to divide x by p and use a remainder to identify the graph point. So I'm going to take 45 divided by 4, 11, remainder 1. Uh, so I'm going to start at 0, remainder 1 would be here. Uh, and so f of 1 is equal to 2, so I can see that my uh, function f of 45, at least as a point, is going to be 45, comma, 2. All right, so that's my f of 45 would be equal to 2, and that point we identified is going to be 45, 2. Let's do the same thing for f of 75. We're going to divide by 4. Uh, uh, f of 75 divided by 4 is 18 with the remainder of 3. 1, 2, 3, we see that 3, uh, uh, the value of 3 for x is going to be y of negative 1. And so uh, f of 75 is equal to 1. And so then we can write as our uh, coordinate 75, negative 1, as the value of the coordinate we get when we substitute or find or plot f of 75. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the graph. So I have f of, uh, I'm going to compare the original function with y is equal to f of x plus 2, and y is equal to f of x plus 2 outside of the parentheses. So we're going to draw the original graph. Uh, we're going to create two tables, y is equal to f of x, y is equal to f of x plus 2, and now I want you uh, to fill in these values of y while I, uh, on the right-hand side, while I pause. All right, you should come up with these values, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1. You're going to graph this function. 
uh, and you end up seeing that the graph is shifted uh, two to the left. All right, so next function y is equal to f of x plus two. Uh, graph my function, uh, same table, right, on the left-hand side, graph on the right. Uh, we're going to get our values here, and then we're going to take a look at the function. You can see that the graph shifts y up by two. So in the first, we had a horizontal shift uh, by uh, negative two, and the second, we had a positive vertical shift by two. All right. Okay, uh, so horizontal shift, f of x plus 2. Uh, so when the value is inside the parentheses, we're shifting right or left. Uh, when we're, uh, the value is outside of the parentheses, we're shifting the graph up or down. All right, so uh, back to our original function, y is equal to f of x minus h plus k. Uh, this uh, delta sign means change, so vertical shift is k. Horizontal shift is h. So you have to change the sign of h in this case in order to re represent the horizontal shift. All right, so now we're going to graph y is equal to 2 times f of x and y is equal to f of 2x. Uh, we're going to create our table, plot the points. I'm going to pause here while you construct this, and then we're going to graph. All right, so I'm filling in uh, the quantities here, and let's take a look at our graph. We see that the amplitude uh, for this graph, y is equal to 2 times f of x, has increased the amplitude by 2. All right. Uh, so where the amplitude was one and a half, it is now a three. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at y is equal to f of 2x. We're going to go ahead and uh, create our table of values. In this case, I want you to uh, create x values in increments of halves because we're actually compressing the graph. And I say that these changes are like an accordion. We're either compressing the graph horizontally or shrinking it horizontally or expanding it horizontally, or we're compressing or expanding it vertically. Uh, so we're either changing the period horizontally or we're changing the amplitude vertically. Okay, so we fill in our values here. We're going to plot the function. You can see that the graph has been compressed uh, by a factor of two. <clears throat> so the period is now half of what it is. Okay, let's go on to sketch uh, f of two times x. Uh, I'm sorry, we already did that. Did we do that? Yes, yeah, so we've done, so we're doing f of two x, and we see that we're compressing the graph. All right, so uh, when the uh, constant value is multiplied by f of x and it's on the outside, we're stretching the graph vertically. Uh, when it's on the inside, we're stretching or shrinking the graph uh, horizontally. All right, so now we're going to take a look at, just kind of create a table of values, and we're going to include c here as that constant value that we multiply by the function either inside or outside of the parentheses. Uh, we're going to, uh, in our columns, vertical stretch and horizontal stretch, and in, in our rows, amplitude and period. And we're going to figure out uh, what the result is by placing a constant outside and then inside of the function value. All right, so <clears throat> when the constant value is outside, we're going to change the amplitude. It's going to be stretched vertically, right? Uh, and the period is going to stay the same. So the period stays the same. Uh, and the amplitude is increased or decreased depending on the value of c, but it's changed. And then when we have c, the constant inside of the function, uh, we see that the horizontal stretch, the amplitude stays the same, but now the period is going to change. The period is going to become p over c. So when c is a value greater than 1, you can see that the period then uh, decreases and the graph is compressed. All right, so let's take a look at, so let's check that box. Let's take a look at what happens. So changing the amplitude when C is outside of the graph, uh, C is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. Again, uh, that constant value as an absolute value is greater than 1. The graph is stretched vertically, so the amplitude increases. When it's a fraction or a value, absolute value between 0 and 1, then the graph is shrunk vertically, so it's compressed and the amplitude uh, decreases. If c is negative, then the graph is flipped over the x-axis. Right? Uh, so f of c of x, now when c is inside of the function, c is greater than 1 or less than 1, so the absolute value is greater than 1, then that graph is shrunk, so it's compressed. As in the example, when it's a fraction, then the graph is stretched uh, horizontally. If c is negative, then the graph, in this case, is flipped over the y-axis. Right? So I'm going to give you some classwork problems to do. You're going to figure these out. We're going to come back and take a look at the answers. Okay, so amplitude is increased by a factor of 3. 
and then graph is uh, horizontal, uh, period is shrunk uh, by a factor of two. The graph does not flip over the x-axis, but is flipped over the y-axis. Uh, in this case, the amplitude is decreased by a factor of one-half. In this case, the uh, period is increased by a factor of two, so one over 0.5. Graph is neither is flipped neither over the x or y axis. Uh, y is equal to negative 0.75. Uh, in this case, uh, the amplitude is shrunk by three fourths. Uh, and in this case, the graph is uh, stretched uh, by a factor of one over 0.75. The graph is flipped over the x-axis and flipped over the y-axis. All right, that's it for this edition of Otten Math. Thank you very much for joining us. I believe that's it, so let's take a look at the answers here. Uh, you're going to come and join us next time when we continue talking about functions in the next edition of Otten Math.